Example 3 is a question with return trip. All right. A pilot wishes to fly his aircraft in a straight line from P to Q in a distance of uh, 600 kilometers apart. The bearing of Q from P is 200 degrees. The first thing that you may want to do is, of course, to have a good idea of how where's your P and where's your Q, isn't it? So let us get started by having a point called P. All right, on a bearing of 200 degrees. So we here we go. We have our Q. 200 degrees will be, of course, slightly more than 180 degrees. So going this way, this will be our 200 degrees. Okay, you're flying from P to Q. So no doubt that this has to be one of your side of the triangle. Okay, and obviously you should know that this is an actual path because um, you will be actually traveling from P to Q, isn't it? So this will be our VA. Okay, the actual path of our aircraft. Okay, so this is what uh, so far we know. Right, let's read on. He knows that there is a wind blowing from east. Okay, north, south, east, west. I'm I hope you are pretty sure about where is east. So from east, therefore we know our information on uh, VW, isn't it? So VW goes this way. Okay, from east. From east means uh, towards west. Well, west. Okay. All right. Given that the speed of the aircraft in still air is 360 kilometers per hour, so aircraft in still air means the velocity of the aircraft relative to the wind, isn't it? So this one is going to be 360 kilometers per hour. So again, this is what we know. And that the pilot needs to set a course due south. Okay, now this basically tells us how the pilot is going to steer the aircraft, isn't it? So, in order for the pilot to reach Q from P, okay, he has to steer his aircraft due south. So, of course, now we know, aha, uh -huh, you know, due south means the steering vector and therefore the relative vector. So, this is the velocity of aircraft relative to the wind uh, is going to face down, so downwards. Okay, because this is what the pilot said. Alright, so we are now ready to construct a triangle, isn't it? You see, out of the three sides of the triangle, we already know the three, uh, you know, how it looks like. Okay, so we are at P now, you are going to Q, so you are the pilot. The pilot is going to set a course due south, so this is the uh, VAW, isn't it? Okay, and the wind. It's given very obviously. This is our VW. Okay? So the first thing that you always do is to check if your diagram makes sense. Okay? So first of all, you know that you're at P, you're coming to Q. So yes, this has to be our VA, actual path. Okay? Now, the wind is blowing in this direction, and therefore you have to aim your aircraft somewhere to the right of Q in order to let the wind blow you over here, and therefore you will end up traveling in this path. Okay? Fine, everything is intact. Alright, the logic must work. Next thing is, well, fill in the blanks, isn't it? Okay, so we know that, aha, for this ve uh, relative vector, okay, we know the speed is um, 360 kilometers per hour, isn't it? What else do we know? We know that the distance of PQ is 600 kilometers, so we'll label here 600 kilometers. Like I said earlier on in the previous examples as well, it is important to put in your units as well. Okay, uh, lest you confuse your speed with distance. All right, that's not what you want to happen, isn't it? All right. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to calculate the speed of the wind here. Okay, represented by this vector here. So of course, what we do is we let the speed of the wind be x, isn't it? So x kilometers per hour. Okay. So we are interested in getting the x. Okay, to find x is actually not difficult at all. Well, because remember what is the key thing that we must have? We must have an angle inside the triangle, isn't it? So let's take a look at this triangle. The good news is that this triangle is a very simple triangle because it's a right angle triangle. And that we do know that this angle here is 200 degrees. And therefore, this angle inside here will have to be 20 degrees. Okay, simply, yeah? uh, 200 degrees minus 180 will give you 20. Okay, so here we go. You see, we have this right angle triangle of which we know one of the angle inside and we know one of the sides. 
okay, which is 360 kilometers per hour. To find x in kilometers per hour is no problem. Okay, so it's this opposite side and this is the adjacent side. Okay, with reference to this angle, of course. So we use tangent. Right, tangent 20 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite, which is x over 360. So using a calculator, you will get x as um, 131.03 kilometers per hour. Okay, so this shall be our first part of the answer, and this is the speed of the wind. Okay, there we go. Now, the next part here, find also the time in minutes of the flight. Okay, so now we are going to find how long you, you know, it takes for the aircraft to fly from point P to point Q. So, as uh, what we have learned since our primary school days, of course, time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. So, first of all, we know that the distance that we have to travel will be 600 kilometers per hour, uh, 600 kilometers, isn't it? So this is the actual distance that we are actually traveling at. So the time will obviously become something like this, 600 kilometers divided by the certain speed. Now this certain speed, of course, has to be the actual speed. Okay, because this is the actual distance that we are traveling at, and therefore, um, to find the time, we have to use the actual distance divided by the actual speed that we are actually traveling at. Now please bear in mind, Okay, that 360 degrees, uh, sorry, 360 kilometers per hour, I meant, okay, is not your actual speed. Okay, I, I, I mean, I've emphasized this a lot, a lot of time already, so please uh, have this in your head permanently. Okay, that 360 degrees, uh, sorry, what am I saying? 360 kilometers per hour is not your actual speed because it is the speed in still air. Understand? So to find the actual speed, Okay, we will have to um, let y be the actual speed as represented by this vector, VA. Okay, so to find y is actually not difficult because uh, you can actually use your Pythagoras theorem. Okay, because you already know that this side is 360 and this side is 131, so to find y is no problem. Okay, alternatively, of course, you can use your uh, trigo. Trigo ratio is an adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over hypotenuse is really up to you. Okay, so um, I'll use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so y will be equal to the square root of 360 square plus 131.03 square. Okay, so all these are just simply calculator work. So you get it as um, 383. Point one zero four kilometers per hour. Okay, try to leave at least about three or four decimal places uh, in the middle of your working because uh, towards the end your final answer is usually in uh, two or three decimal places or even three significant figures. Okay, so uh, in between during the working we always leave as much as we can so we have a more accurate um, kind of reading towards the end. Okay, there won't be any rounding error. So, here we go. This is our actual speed that we are actually traveling at, isn't it? So, to find the time, all we have to do now is to just simply take 600 divide by the actual speed of 383.104. Okay, of which we will get 1.566 hours. Okay, but uh, bear in mind the question wants us to give it in minutes. Therefore, we have to give our final answer in minutes, of course. So, uh, converting 1.6, 1.566 hours into minute, we will get 94.0 minutes. Okay, correct to, of course, um, three significant figures. Here we go. So, we are almost done. Okay, so now we have to tackle the return trip. Right, now, if the velocity of the wind remains unchanged, what cost does the pilot need to set on the return flight from Q to P? All right now, many people, okay, many students will think that you know, uh, all you have to do is to just change the direction of the arrows, isn't it? I mean, to come from P to Q, you are traveling this direction. Okay, of course, you're coming back. Of course, be traveling this direction. Okay, now the thing to remember here is that to do the return trip. Okay, you always, always have to redraw 
or rather reconstruct okay a new triangle altogether okay basically you cannot recycle your triangle because aiming vector everything is going to be haywire okay of course you can't possibly be aiming downwards isn't it i mean if you are at q you aim downwards you'll end up somewhere else okay you have to redraw a diagram an entirely new diagram to do the return trip okay so let us just um scroll down a little bit so we have more space okay but we'll leave the original diagram here intact here okay so that we can um, see because there's certain information certain things that you can recycle okay so what are certain things that you can recycle of course p and q isn't it i mean well when you go to q i mean when when your trip is from p to q or from q to p the two cities are not going to move okay so this is still going to be the same which means that the bearing is still also the same 200 degrees and everything else the distance apart is still going to be 600 ki uh, 600 kilometers okay the only difference now is that you're flying from q to p and therefore this direction and this will be your va okay now what else do we know well the wind doesn't change isn't it so the wind is still blowing from east okay so now you're the pilot all right and it, this time round, we are not uh, we are not told uh, how the pilot should steer the aircraft, isn't it? So this is when we have to uh, use the skill that we have learned so far, okay, to figure out how are we going to steer the aircraft. Okay, so this is point Q and this is point P. You are you are flying from here to here. You know that there's a wind blowing in this direction. Okay, so the wind is blowing in this direction. So where do you think you should aim your aircraft? You're at Q now, so of course you must aim your aircraft somewhere in this manner, isn't it? So that when the wind blows, I mean the wind is always blowing, but uh, the wind will help you push the aircraft. So this is the VW, and of course this is your aiming. Okay, so this is your VAW, as we have been talking about. Okay, so this will be a new diagram. As you can see, this diagram and this diagram is entirely different. Okay, this is a triangle triangle, this obviously is not. Okay, so um, it is important to bear in mind, very, very important to remember that whenever you're dealing with a return trip, you have to rethink the entire situation altogether. Certain things you can recycle, all right, which is uh the which will be the points. Okay, the points that you're going or coming back to. Okay, so these are the points that bearing, of course, bearing of this this points will be the same. Okay, the distance between the two points will also be the same. The wind is unchanged, therefore the speed of the wind remains the same as well. So the wind speed is still one three one point zero three kilometers per hour. Okay, so this still remains the same. What else remains the same? It will be the speed of the aircraft in still air. Okay, so the speed of the aircraft in still air is 360 kilometers per hour. All right, why does this remain unchanged? Well, because we are still going to use the same aircraft. Okay, the question did not tell us that uh, we are changing a new aircraft that can fly faster in still air or slower in still air. Well, we don't really know. But therefore, okay, it's still the same aircraft. So therefore, the speed in still air will still be the same. Okay, now, please do not think that the actual speed will be the same as well. In fact, the actual speed will never, never be the same. Okay, think about it. When you go, okay, um, you may be with the wind, therefore you may be traveling faster. When you come back, obviously you'll be going against the wind, so therefore you'll be slower. Okay, so the actual speed is always the one that you cannot recycle. Okay, so the few things that you can recycle are all here already. Okay, so uh, what are we looking for, by the way? Okay, we're looking for the cost, isn't it? The cost that the pilot should set. Now, so this is the cost that your pilot should set, and therefore the bearing that we are looking for, of course, when they ask us to find a cost, they, ask, they are really asking us to find a bearing. So to find a bearing of this vector, we go to the tail of the arrow, draw a north, and this will be the angle that we're after. Okay, good. Now we have our target and uh, how we're going to get it, isn't it? So uh, remember, like we have seen in the first two examples, same thing. To solve any questions in this kind of uh, situation, we always need an angle inside the triangle, isn't it? So where do we find the angle inside the triangle? Well, it depends on what we know here. Okay, we know that the bearing of Q from P is 200 degrees, and therefore this will give us a 60, uh, sorry, 20 degrees. Now, same thing here. Okay, if you were to draw a north through this point, P 
P, okay, now this angle here will be your 20 degrees, isn't it? Same angle, same 20 degrees. And therefore, using alternate angle, this one as well will be 20 degrees. Okay? So this is 20 degrees, as we know of. Now, because this is due west, from east, due west, right? From east means towards west. This is 90 degrees. Okay? Therefore, if this is 90, this is 20, we'll know that this whole angle is 110 degrees. Okay, so now, yes, we're in business again. We know an angle inside a triangle. We can basically solve for this angle. Okay, so this angle shouldn't be too much of a headache from now on, right? We could simply use your sine rule. You know that if you have 360 divided by sine 110 degrees, again, how I get the 110 degrees? From here. Okay, this blue angle here is 20, this is 90, and together gives you 110. Okay, it's equivalent to... 131.03 divided by sine alpha. Okay, I should just call this alpha, angle alpha. Make things a lot easier, uh, easier for us to label. So, from your calculator, alpha will be roughly, in fact, very close to 20 degrees, 20.00 something. So, okay, 20 degrees. And therefore, the required bearings that we are supposed to find will be, of course, 20 degrees plus 20 degrees, 40 degrees. So it will be 040 zero, zero degrees. Okay, there we go.